for the purposes of our time stamp it is now 18 minutes past 11 on saturday the 19th of june 2021 it is at night time just before midnight it is the fourth day of our refeeding process after we completed our 21 days and 21 nights water fast which we completed on tuesday the 15th of june we that's myself and my wife mapule the month of june is also the 30th month from the day we started our 40 days and 40 nights water fast on the 1st of january 2019. this time stamp is important for the record of what i'm about to share my name is george nyabadza i am a craftsman and a scribe of the word of god and I am a coach of the Mind of Christ coaching paradigm. I speak to you as a craftsman, a scribe, and a coach of the Word of God, but and only that which the Spirit of God instructs me to speak to you. Today, at about 3 a.m., I was woken up by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, who over a period of two hours instructed me to decree this sound into all of creation today. Romans chapter 8, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward god for it does not subject itself to the law of god for it is not even able to do so and those who are in the flesh cannot please god however you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you but if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live in according to live according to the flesh for if you are living according to the flesh you must die but if by the spirit you are put into death the deeds of the body you will live for all who are being led by the spirit of god these are sons of god i'll read that again for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. I will read that again. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also 
will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, for, he, for who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he will be the firstborn among many children, many brethren. I'll read that again. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he will be the firstborn among many brethren. I've got to read that again. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's select? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we have been put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to move to 1 Corinthians Chapter 2. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. So that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. The Holy Spirit asked me to clearly state that Paul was speaking to Corinthians, and there is a depth of meaning here when he was speaking to brothers in the church like you and I, when he said, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of man, 
but on the power of God. It is possible in the church that your faith is resting on the wisdom of men in the church, and, but not on the power of God. And scripture tells us, the Spirit is saying, your faith would not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. Yet, we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Just as it is written, Things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. I'll read that again. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, and for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even, though the, even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. I'll read that again. Which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. I read it again. Which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. The third reading the Holy Spirit instructed me to read to you is Hebrews chapter 1. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. God after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days he has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. 
I'll read it one more time. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days they have spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels, as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to him. And when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, Who makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire? But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of his kingdom. I will read that again. And when he again, from verse 6, when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of his kingdom. I read that again for the third time. And when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the righteous scepter is the scepter of his kingdom. The Holy Spirit wanted me to emphasize the two different categories here. There is angels and there is the Son. And of the angels, he says, but of the Son, he says, we are sons of God. We are in the Son. The Son is in us. We are in Christ. Christ is in us. We are not angels. We are not angels of God. David a man after God's heart, after he went into error and God came down and sent the angel of the Lord to destroy Jerusalem. David looked up and he saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with his arm stretched out and his sword stretched out and David was so fearful of what he saw. We are in the Son. We are not angels of the Lord. There are two different categories. John, in the book of Revelation, when he saw the angel that was sent by the Lord Jesus, was so overwhelmed, he, he, he bowed down, went down on knees to worship, and the angel said, we are fellow bond servants. Do not worship me, worship the Lord. There are angels of the Lord and there is the Son. We are in the Son. We are not angels of the Lord. Verse 9, you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain, and they all will become old like a garment, and like a mantle you will roll them up. 
like a garment will also be changed. But you are the same, and your years, your years will not come to an end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? I will read that again. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? I'll read it again. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? My next reading as part of this sound being decreed into all of creation is Revelation 3. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die. For I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. So remember what you have received and heard, and keep it and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, He who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens, says this, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut, because you have a little power, and they have kept my word, and they have not denied my name. Behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan, who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. I will make them come and bow down at your feet, and make them know that I have loved you. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing, that which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, so that no one will take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. I will read that again. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it anymore. And I'll write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. I'll read it again. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it anymore. And I'll write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, 
the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I'm going to read to you Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 10 to 11. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, he who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. I'll read that again. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, he who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. I will read that again. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, he who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life even when faced with death. You and I, fellow born servants are his Christ. Christ Jesus is the head and we are the body. There is no person therefore between God the Father and us his Christ. If the personal testimony of our 21 days and 21 nights deep water fast resonated with your spirit, then the present sound that you are hearing from the throne of God is of the same frequency and the clarion call from the Spirit of God is for a deep water fast of 21 days and 21 nights, 24-7, that has to be heeded only by those that is calling forth. If the sound is new and unfamiliar to your spirit, then do nothing until the Spirit of God witnesses it to your spirit, whenever that will be. I want you to hear me. Do absolutely nothing until you hear the Spirit of God speak to you. You are not required to act on the words that you are hearing from me, 
but you are required to act on the sound being released from the throne of God. And only when the Spirit of God witnesses it to your spirit. The clarion call, the sound that the Spirit of God instructed me to release into the earth is a, is a personal call and not a mindless gathering of saying, let's have, let's go on a 21 days a night fast as a group, as a church, as a nation. No, 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 that is not it. This is a clarion call only for those who are hearing the same sound that is flowing from the throne of God. I've already explained why we fast, and if you do not know yet why we fast, why the Lord Jesus Christ said when you fast, then go back and watch our testimony. It is available on my website and social page, page, uh, media pages and the links are in, uh, down below or in the notes on this video. The resource book that accompanies this clarion call for a deep water fast for 21 days and 20 nights is the book that was birthed by the Spirit of God out of the furnace of our own 21 days and 21 nights water fast. The book is called Zion. The sun is the radiance of the glory of God, the perfection of beauty. It is a comprehensive collection of scriptures that reveal who we are as sons of God with the mind of Christ in the earth. These scriptures were compiled as the Holy Spirit revealed them to me during the course of these 21 days and 21 nights of water only fasting. This book is completely free of any human interpretation of scripture because that is the job of the master craftsman, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, and it will be during the course of your 21 days and 21 nights water fast, a matter of revelation between you and him. Again, let me re-emphasize that the clarion call that is being released into the earth, the sound that is flowing from the throne of God today for the deep water fast of 21 days and 21 nights 24-7, is only for those who clearly know in their spirit by the witness of the Holy Spirit that it is time to embark on it. And the knowing must be as clear as you know that you are saved and you are a son of God. If he has spoken to you, then he wants to bring revelation knowledge to you and guide you into fresh depths in God according to his eternal blueprint for your life as his Christ. I have my own revelation of these scriptures. And if you were to look at my Bible and my volumes of handwritten and electronic study notes, you would clearly see this. And every day is taking me into fresh truths and depths in God. And that is what he has purposed for me in the beginning, in the deep, before the foundation of the world. Again, I speak to you as a coach, as a scribe, as a craftsman in the word of God and nothing else. For we are fellow born servants of Christ and we have the mind of Christ. Let me just explain my coaching process. As a mind of Christ master craftsman coach, I come alongside you and point you towards the revelation of Christ, the son of God, the perfection of beauty and to the head of Christ, Christ Jesus, and to your teacher, the Holy Spirit. That is the fullness of my job. It is up to you to build your relationship with him and let him take you into the fresh depths in God. I know what Elijah didn't know when he started feeling discouraged, and for this reason, I am really grateful that God our Father has called me to be part of the company decreeing this present sound in the earth today, this call into the earth right now. Here's how Paul explains what Elijah didn't know and that I know. In Romans 11 verse 1 to 5, Or oh, do you not know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, They've torn down your altars and I alone am left 
and they are seeking my life. But what is the divine response to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to bow. In the same way then, there has also come to be at the present time a remnant according to God's gracious choice. <clears throat> I know there are sons of God in the earth today who are hearing the sound that is flowing from the throne of God in this day and are seeking the revelation of the knowledge of him accurately, intimately, personally, without any interference from the paradigms of any person functioning out of what Paul calls the wisdom of man. And as the Holy Spirit re revealed to me the reasons of the soul, circulate, circulatingly, circulating endlessly around what was once a valid past season revelation, what I call valid and genuine stepping ancient stones. An ancient could be thousands of years ago, or decades ago, or even yesterday. But without the Holy Spirit and fresh depths in God, what was once a valid revelation from God, an ancient stepping stone from, from all of us, becomes the forte of the soul, the wisdom of men, and the reason of the soul. But I know there are sons of God in the earth today who are hearing the sound that is flowing from the throne of God in this day and are seeking the revelation of the knowledge of him accurately, intimately, personally, without any interference from the wisdom of men. Each day, each hour, each minute, every moment of, of our lives, the Holy Spirit desires to take those who are hot with desire of with the desire of truth and the desire for fresh depths of God. He is willing and eager to take you there. These are the people who are willing to present their bodies as living sacrifices and their minds to be transformed into the fullness of the mind of Christ, the fullness of the revelation of the mind of Christ that we have. Romans 11 verse 33 up to Romans 12, verse 2. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and, and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who can become his counselor? Or who has first given to him that it might be pay, paid back to him again? For from him and through him and to him are all things, to him be the glory forever. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, I urge you, brethren, if you are hearing the sound in your spirit, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So if you are hearing this sound and know you have to respond, then go to my website page on fasting, georgenyabadza.com forward slash water fast, where I explain in detail the process of preparing for this deep water fast these 21 days and 21 nights water fast only 24-7. By the way, this is not a 40-day and 40-night fast. I am absolutely clear that it is not my place to call you into what we could call the fast of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not my place to do that, so let's be absolutely clear on this. The clarion call that the Holy Spirit instructed me to release into the earth is just for a 21 days and 21 nights water fasting prayer for only for those who are hearing the sounds from the throne of God, not hearing just the words that I'm sharing. I have to emphasize here that your initial contact with us 
has to be via my website page on water fasting so that you can read the whole process completely as well as the medical disclaimers that are on that page. You have to contact us via that page after reading through and understanding everything. As a scribe, as a scribe, a craftsman and a coach of the word of God, I would charge you quite handsomely for my services. However, as you read the process, the two coaching sessions built in, into the process of your 21 days and 21 nights water fast are free of charge. I only do what I hear and see my father saying and doing. And he has clearly instructed me to offer these sessions for free. My time is free except for data cost. The books are free except, except for the 99 US cents. That's less than one US dollar that Amazon charges for storage and distribution for the books. The only cost is what you are going to pay by presenting your body as a living sacrifice during the deep water fast and your mind to be transformed metamorphosis through the revelation of the book and the scriptures compiled that describes who you are. Zion, the sun, is the radiance of the glory of God, the perfection of beauty. My website again is georgenyabaza.com forward slash waterfast. And now I'll read the last scripture that I was instructed to read with this sound that's been decreed into the earth. It's a Revelation 5. I saw in the right hand of him, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaim, proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was, was found worthy to open the book or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood. I'll read that again. Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be kingdom a kingdom and priest to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. I'll read that again. You have made them to be a kingdom and priest to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. I'll read it again. You have made them to be a kingdom and priest to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. 
and every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them are heard saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and glory and honor and dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept on saying, kept saying, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Amen, Amen, and Amen.